Okay. 92 of building a homestead. Wait, I forgot all the things. Tools. Gideon, that's your choice, buddy. You make the decisions. Live with the consequences. Grab that tumbler, please. We actually accomplished our goals. We got an access road in, we tapped water, and we cleared two plus acres of pasture in 100 days. Well, in 90, 89 days. So you know what that means, kids. If we accomplish the goal in a shorter amount of time, it means we didn't set our goals high enough. Today we're gonna look at what kind of stretch goals we can have. Did you guys get the alfalfa? No, because there it is. That's okay. One possibility for stretch goals that I'm very excited about is we're getting some machines, a track loader and a Mini X. Why am I whispering? Because I don't want the boys to hear this. The Mini X is coming in March. We assumed both things were coming in March. But the track loader is actually, it's at the dealership now and it's just going through the shop and should arrive this week. The boys put something in here. Not much. Put something in here. Where'd you guys get the wood that you put in there? Somebody put some wood in there this morning. Who was it? Me. Where'd you get it from? In the cart. Oh, okay. The problem out here is we've riddled this together with mucho screws and this keeps falling off, pinning their heads, or blocking them from getting in there. We need to fix this once and for all. Matt, where's your other glove? Have you lost your other glove? Go somewhere else with it. We put in a bolt there, there, and down there. Six inch bolt, half inch, a flat washer, a lock washer and a nut. With big animals like vanilla and especially stud, he likes to rub on this thing. The bolts are gonna make all the difference. Surprise problem, problem number two. These bottom one by sixes have come undone. Maybe they just need tightened right there, but they're completely off over there. If we leave that undone, eventually it's gonna get worse and pull the whole thing out. It's not gonna hold hay in. Some of these screws might fall into the bedding and somebody might accidentally eat it and get what you call hardware disease. Not all the way through. Can we build an area where we milk? What's wrong with where we milk now? It's freezing. You want a temperature control milk area? Yes, with a milk machine. <laughs> you can take it all out of my bank account. I'll even build it. I don't think it's good for them to go from cold to warm. My quiet time. Whoa, I think this is a better spot. And, uh, then I, I, I was able to like keep driving, but then I... Oh, snap, how'd we miss this? Oh, box of leaf lard. Thought I did everything. You wanna do everything when you have the grinder out. Look at that snow white lard. One, two, three and a half. Almost four gallons. And we got two more trays of ground lard. This will be about two, two and a half gallons. Whoa! <laughs> Hear this for me, guys. So sorry, are these clean or dirty? Baba! 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 Yeah, buddy, I'm watching. Woo! <laughs> Whoa. 
one food service tray equals one five gallon jug full of lard. Papa is going to have us fix this break. This piece came off from right here, so we're going to bang it back and weld it. You guys make it? Yeah. What about the wheels? Did you put extra wheels on it? We put another wheel on it where it broke. No, there was other wheels. Jacked up. There's probably two or three broken. What are you guys working on here? Just a little thing for Henry. Okay. Hey, oh and I got this. We gotta get these hides packed up. This is one. This is one. Like this. Decide, do you need two crescent wrenches? Uh. Already have. Oh wait, take this other one. There's no. probably at least two. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go take take this off. Come on, G. Like this? I mean, theoretically you could, but please don't. That's a nice, that's a very nice bike. See that? It's ridiculous. Chicken out. We got a sigh of relief to finishing the 100 day challenge. In a minute, we're gonna go look at some stretch goals. That's gonna get really exciting. But we gotta take care of some things on the farm first. Mistake of putting the poultry wire on the inside. Even though it was tucked into these boards, the pigs had just picked it right out. We could put a pig panel, I was thinking here on the outside, it'll stop the chickens, but if you put a pig panel on the inside, it'll stop them from tearing this up more. Wow, okay. Guys, if we don't fix this, chickens are gonna keep getting out, and your chickens with their chicks, are they even still alive? Yeah. Are gonna get God if we don't get them in. Chickens get up in here and get right out. There's some panels right here. I did a piglet training demo. Let's get some zip ties and some feed for the pigs. Get in. Get in! Get in! Okay, there you go. Let's go. Hey, did you get the wheels replaced? Yeah. Wait, you didn't need that one? What do you mean? Wait, I'm no. sure there's more. I'm sure there's more than one broken wheel. All the wheels are good. We just changed them, you know. Are you sure? Yeah. I'll go out there and check. It won't it'll be okay. Just side, let's put that back in the basement. Okay. Alright, and then y'all come on. Lily! Lily! The chickens can't have water if their water is out here empty. Lily! Bring the pig board, please. I'm gonna get them fed, okay? okay? And then we're gonna go in and put a zip tie these pig panels on the wall. More. Little bit of a Jerry fix, but it will fix us temporarily. We've attached a pig panel and zip tied it in many areas. We have an extra panel. We don't need both of them. We have these two little pigs. They keep getting out, and that's a problem because they knock over the chicken's water, right? And they eat the chicken's food. They junk all the chicken's water. Oh, they junk it up. They junk it up. And oh, they, they drink eat all it. The food. Okay, I think we need to zip tie the heck out of this one. Zip ties, bro, let's go. Yes, Papa. Stand with me, buddy. You want to be a roly dirty. Think that'll do it, kids? We got like a bazillion zip ties in that thing. I think it'll hold them in. This feels pretty sturdy. We couldn't go all the way down to the ground because this has to swing open. You gonna stay in, little guy? Oh yeah, so you can't just get out anymore. I'm gonna tell you what, this feels great to be putting in some work on the base farm. Some of these things have neg aren't neglected because we're so focused on the project. Those chicks are out. Now wait a minute. How did they get out? Here they come, Gideon, open the door. Good. I feel like a fireman going around today and putting out fires. Tim, confused by you not knowing how to do this because you do this every day. Actually, the hose is normally do. Is the hose frozen? Yeah. Okay, we'll do the water chores every afternoon and then you won't have to do worry about a frozen hose. I would get two waters. Uh-oh, Gideon, what happened? There's broken eggs. Come get these that didn't break and take them upstairs, please. What lady over there? 
We got a bunch of sandbags over here. I know, it's 11.40. We wanted to be done by 11.30, but... They're gonna poke holes in your Let's tarp. go. Hey guys, get off the tarp, please. It'll last 450 years if you don't put holes in it. Legacy you tarp for y'all, let's go. <laughs> bunch of bags here from these tarps that were over here. Let's get those. For any bags that don't have a good tie at the top, that's zip tied. Everything must be zip tied, apparently. If it needs tied, send it this way, okay? Put it down towards the end. Good job, guys. Let's do it. Let's go, everybody in. It's the only thing that stands between us and lunch. And freedom! Mom is up to things in here. Her little helper, Gideon. She gets so excited about this. You get so excited about rendering lard. I do. Why so? because it's expensive. One pound would be 10 bucks. That's about three and a half pounds. Yeah. That's $35 yeah. for the lard right there. And you're gonna get how many out of the five gallons? Four gallons out of both of those pots. Because mm. they weren't all the way filled. Four gallons, so half a gallon is three and a half. A gallon is seven, seven pounds. $280 worth of lard right there? Yeah. $280 worth of lard right there? Yeah, and then, and that doesn't count what Holy smokes. we did over there. And we did two and more of that. The actually is more expensive than that. So, over $500 worth of lard. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Wow. And like, I wow. really like frying or wow. cooking with lard. I like mm -hmm. It's healthier. It, it is. It's, so I also learned recently that mm -hmm. lard is the, um, has the second most I use of vitamin D, second mm. to cod liver oil. Isn't that crazy? At 500 I use per teaspoon if they've been raised correctly in Easy the sun on it, and all of that. So it's good stuff. Mm. Here comes FedEx. Is that your cheesecloth? Supposed to get cheesecloth today. Are you going to be having enough until? I'm just using the same one over. It's okay. Working. I want to tell you guys a story. Hey man, how you doing? Good. It's like Christmas for a homesteader. My Premier One order. <laughs> well, and some diapers. That's kind of boring, but you coming with? Is yep. on. Story time. There's my house. Here's the road where it happened. I feel like I was about right here and suddenly I had this pain in my groin. I didn't think much of it at the time. I had I was prone to groin injuries from my running and my soccer days. We just took it easy. We just went home and uh, I just figured it, the level of pain it was, I just figured it'd be gone the next day. Next set, I treated that like a groin injury, like a sports injury, but no matter what I did, no matter how much I rest, it never got better. And pain started to come up in different places like in my feet. And we didn't know what the heck was going on. We started spending some money trying to figure out what was wrong. We started spending a lot of money continually to try to figure out what was wrong. This is awful spotty shady right here. I feel like it happened right there, but because of this terrible light, I'm gonna, we'll, we'll, we'll pretend it happened right here. So we kept having to spend more and more money and my ability kept having to go down and down. Eventually we figured out it was Lyme disease, but that wasn't much help to us because I had had it so long at this point, it was very hard to dress and there's no like real clean cut solution. So I'm struggling with depression, with physical pain, lack of confidence, all these kinds of things. I'm running the farm, my kids are young, and I'm right here and I'm, I'm feeling my heart. About right here. I said, you know, things ought to be connected. At the time, my kids were very young. The beautiful one would have been inside with them. I was hey, doing everything on my own. Drills? What'd you say? Where did you put my drills? Oh, they're in the bag up there by the kitchen counter. Worst time of day to film something. There's shadows everywhere, but y'all bear with me. The chickens were here. The chickens were in the backyard. Where were the chickens? There was the house. Bad side for chickens, by the way. That's the north side, especially in the winter. Look, the ground is still hard and frozen. Can you get the spigot undone? The sun barely hits it. Were you able to do it? Yeah. Hmm. See, look, there's frost right here. I didn't know any better. I didn't know about design. We'll get to that here in a minute. Okay, that did shut off. You want this on? Yeah. Is it frozen, the line? I am doing a bit, but I'm just helping my bro on the way out. That doesn't feel frozen. Have you checked the spigot to make sure it's working? I knew nothing about permaculture homestead design at that point. That's working. So water's not coming through this. Nothing? Although that's open, it's probably broke. No, I don't feel water in the hose. There, there it is. goes. 
<laughs> our house for reference our very first garden you say what's the problem you have gardens here now yes I have crop gardens here now you don't visit them much this was a problem this is a hundred and thirty ish feet to our Help front up. door thank you my man so so no wonder I neglected it that early that first year when Rebecca said hey are there are there any weeds out there and I would look from our window way up there through a screen and say no I think it's okay well I came out here the day we were to weed it in the weekend and it was terrible and I'd been telling her all week it's okay Justin got his thinking cap on got the string trimmer and went to town on the garden <laughs> and buddy I was thinking this is a thing I'm gonna write a book one day it's about weed eating garden man I'm, I'm why hadn't nobody thought of this beautiful one came walking out st stood about right there my peppers oh yeah okay to this day if I get that string trimmer out she's saying where are you going with that it was too far away fill that with sand please don't we'll never get rid of it instead I should have had the garden right here one two three four steps from the house and we've got a garden wonderful cover crop on these raised bed gardens this winter all right buddy we're going back down you're being so patient and good follow me about in a minute we're gonna chase these chickens I think these chickens were out hopefully they were out before we did that fix if they're getting out before after we did that fix then we have another problem so I'm struggling and I'm feeling in my heart that things ought to be connected things ought to be going smoother everything was so separated I'm suffering and a friend told me about Jeff Lawton and I ended up watching one of Jeff Lawton's permaculture videos on how he set up Zaytuna Farms. There are two chicken tractor systems producing one cubic meter of compost each every week of the year. My big takeaway from Jeff's farm was everything was working together. Don't look at them. Oh no, what'd you do? I didn't do anything. What'd you do? Here it comes. Chicken, Here it comes. Get, 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 get you trouble? Yeah, they're all giving me trouble. Get them all in. Okay, Josiah said he accidentally let some out on the other end. That makes me feel better. Clearly, I was unfocused in my food growing goals because we had got a meat goat that we didn't plan to eat and a mule that was so old that not only wouldn't it work, we couldn't even ride it. Two lessons learned there. Never get livestock because either they are free or cheap. And lesson two, never get livestock that do not line up with an appropriate path to your goal. <laughs> Studying under Jeff Lawton at his farm in Australia, I learned how to work with nature rather than against it to make things more abundant and more fruitful with less input. I learned how to make connections between things and have things work together instead of being completely separate. And another key thing I learned, you know what, let's get them there. Uh, I learned how to turn problems into solutions. I began to look at the world completely different. Not just the farm, but the world. <laughs> That's right. Amen, brother. Get in. Come on. He's definitely having a good exercise and staying with me <laughs> all over the farm getting these shots. Fast forward a bit. Now I've got this crazy productive yard right outside my door. One, two, three, four, five, six raised beds it isn't just a garden bed here look right next to it sorry guys it's winter it's a little grown down kind of our ugly season chickens be in here in the winter and summer. they're on this what oh summer. summer you're right in this in the growing season thank you Gideon thank you on wood chips stirring it adding manure it's absorbing their manure and it's breaking down compost here puts under this wood chips crazy crazy right well, it's frozen. It's frozen, but mucho compost. So the compost then, you stuck? Yeah. The compost coming. Compost feeds the garden. And of course, hey, you want to get some of this for the chickens right now? How? Well, I'll have to get you down first. Hang, hang tight. Hang tight. All right, ready? Yeah. I got you. I got you. Swing your legs down. Good. Grab some of that for the chickens. The veggies and the weeds and the extra, the abundance goes into the chickens and feeds them. These are our cover crops. Rabbit. Who says we can't pick these for the chickens in the winter, huh? It's a great green for them. This is for the rabbit. This is for the Ooh, chickens. I like it. Please tell me that one chicken never got up. Oh. Josiah, can you help us get this one chicken? <laughs> Here you go. You're welcome. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. It sees me, it's scared. Oh yeah, there you go. 
There you go. Oh. I should have feed the grass a little further in. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. Oh no. Oh no. They're getting out. <sighs> okay. Got that one back in. Here we go. In here. This isn't just, oh, where are we going to put the chickens this winter? No. Put the chickens in the high tunnel. Put down the wood chips to absorb their manure. It's nice and warm in here. They're out of the rain. They give mucho huevos. Right, why not put the pigs in here? Here they are. You happy in here, Beefcake? Winter home for the pigs and chickens, but in the summer, they go out. They got jobs to do outside, and this becomes a heat-loving vegetable paradise. Tomatoes, squash, beans, cucumbers. Yes. What happened? Did, 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 did she like the grass? Yeah. Just wrap that around. Keep going with it because it's gotten stretched. Can you reach through and grab it more? I don't want to get bit. Will you get bit? Yes, she bites. I literally want, I want to start biting her, biting her. Yeah, she's Okay, relaxed. good. Oh boy. Where's our notebook? I bet you had it. Did I? Oh boy. Probably put it down to chase chickens. Oh, but I see another chicken. How much money do I get if I find Two dollars. <sighs> what is, what is it? Too much? No, that's too little. That's a lot of money. How much is that? Especially for just finding a notebook. That's probably, well, I thought it would be right here. Ha ha. I'm impressed how well Gideon is listening. Did you hear that when he corrected me when I misspoke and said winter when I meant summer? He's listening. Now that I started practicing permaculture design on my homestead, I had been able to, you know, take multiple elements, multiple drawers, and narrow it down to one system or fewer systems at the ve at least. Uh, now my farm was more manageable even though I had lime. I don't know why I brought this whole thing over here because I, I made these mineral bins removable so I can just carry them. But anyway, my farm became more productive. I began to work more focused and the work became more doable and enjoyable. The aragonite. It's a Thorvin Kelp for trail nutrient balancer, a special blend of minerals, vitamins, and probiotics to balance your feed program and ensure proper nutrition. And there's one more thing. Best practice, you get it out of the creek sand out of the creek. It's got minerals in it as well, but we got a lot going on with everything right now. We just got some. We just bought some rooster cheese. AK grit. Can you buy grit? Yeah, you can. A lot easier. A lot easier just to buy it. Ten bucks for this whole bag. Cameras are too big. Too big. And you got the notebook. This Sunday, 2 to 6 p.m., my first annual homestead design course. It's basically a permaculture design course condensed down to four hours specifically for homesteaders so that you can come with some doubts or no idea or some idea of where you want to go on your homestead and go away with goals and a plan and a map. But I know everybody's short on time and money. We're get, I'm going to knock out the teaching in just a couple of hours, do some Q&A, and then call people in and do some consulting. So if you want a chance to be a part of that and get consulted, you definitely want to come to the show. January 22nd, 2 to 6 p.m. Here's what I'm going to be sharing with you. How to avoid the seven biggest homestead pitfalls that keep you from being successful. We're going to knock away at the age-old problem of time, money, and energy being the problem, and we're going to turn that into solution. You'll see. It's, gonna, it's amazing. There are seven steps I've identified for setting the correct goals and knowing how to prioritize them to get the most important stuff done so you're completely satisfied by the end of the day even though you haven't done it all because none of us are going to do it all and that's okay because I've got some tricks that if you do these things that we identify you will get the most production possible out of your farm and you will rest peacefully at night. I'm gonna talk about eight things to look for in land. I know many of you are looking for land. Uh, I want yes? to show you something. Yes? Catch the rooster for me and I want to show you something. You want me to catch the rooster for you? Yeah. And even if you're not looking for land, it'll help you look at your land better. Know the order of building your homestead. So from whether you're on raw land and where do you start, we're gonna go through all the steps. Assuming you're on raw land, 
to all the way to where you're growing all your own food on your homestead. What are the steps you should take? I'm not going in there now. He's in the pig. I'm not going in there. Finally, three checkpoints for knowing where to start. Now that one will probably be higher up in the order there. Still developing the silly bus, if you know what I'm saying, for Sunday's show. But listen, come to Sunday's show. It's gonna be an Abundance Plus. So we have three different tiers to choose from. Not only do you get the Homestead Design Course, the live Homestead Design Course, you get access to Abundance Plus. So we're gonna send you an email and all you members, you already have access to it. So just stay tuned. We love you guys, you're in. I'm gonna send you, when you guys sign up, here, here would be a reason to sign up early. Get in early now. Do some pre-work. Go in and watch my Intro to Permaculture master class inside Abundance Plus. And plus, I'm gonna give everybody 10 things to, one of them's gonna include a notebook. Begin to prepare to design your homestead. So I'll give you 10 items, and I don't think any of them, save maybe one, costs, well, a notebook does cost money, doesn't it? So maybe half of them don't, you probably already have them. Okay, a lot of it. Hey, what you doing? You trying to get the rooster out of there? Yeah. I could get him in there. He's in with the mom. He's in with the mama. She's she's all right. I worry about beefcake sometimes. Get your pre-show bonuses and content, and come in ready for that show on this Sunday, this coming Sunday. He's trying to escape. See, just I had that open that he escaped earlier. Oh look, look! Oh, oh, oh! Gave himself away. He hops up on here, and then there's a crook in between where that door goes down. Chickens are hard to keep in. Okay, that's a problem for another day. You know what's stupid? He gets out and immediately wants back in. Comes both of them. Come on. There's two wanting to get out. Grab that one. Whoa. Oh. Yeah. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. There we go. Okay. Now. Come on. Now, what do you want to do with him? Are you drawing a line? He's at the line. No, it's up. Really? No, I think oh. you're missing a step. <laughs> I oh, well. All right, guys, get signed up. Abundanceplus.com, link down in the description. Oh, plus there's a tier where you guys could come here later. I think it's February. Uh, details are down in the description, or down on the sales page. February 18th, yeah, you could come here. You could come here. If you get a lifetime membership, uh, we'll have a nice meal together. You can come on chores. Uh, I'll give you a permaculture design tour of how we laid this place out. Anyway, check it out. Hey, what's going on in here? This is a killer ring though. This is perfect floor, right? Well, you're a busy bee today. I am. You feeling better? I am. Good. How many dollar bills of lard have you processed? We did, we have almost four gallons. We said $400, $10 a gallon. So no, that's way wrong. $10 a pound. So there's, hold on, let's Oh, there's, let's there's seven in a gallon. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 70 per gallon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you are boiling me some pork skins. Yeah. How sweet are you? Well, I knew they were in there, and the pot was already dirty, yeah. so I And I think that's the key, is to do them while they're fresh. Trying a little something in the kitchen tonight. We got our ground beef back. We told them to put 25% fat in it. We gave them a bucket of tallow. I think they must have put the whole five gallons bucket of tallow. Because <laughs> I think it's like 50-50 fat. It's kind of I hate to say it, but the last time, you know, we put liver and heart in the last ground beef oh. and ruined it for ourselves. I think this time so, we just need to So this time I put one pack of U.S. Wellness, it was uh, grass-fed. It's 85 85-15. 15% 15 fat. And this, I'm guessing, is 50-50. So those two together maybe won't have Same such a strong to tallow better. taste in the burger. Come on. See that? How's it look, Beck? Looks good. Taste test. Keep overcooking them, though, that's for sure. Okay. We're getting there, Beck. I think, though, a one to three ratio would be even better. There's still quite a bit of a tallow flavor. Look at all the grease in the bottom of that, that I've and I've already poured out that much. 